This is a shout out for all lovers of truth, freedom, and happiness. Those that despise the lies, the government spies, and the watching eye. The 144K are here to save the day. We have been chosen for this end time mission. It's no cakewalk, but we've been blessed by the Most High, Adonai. And so I'm calling all regulators on the front lines. We need to mount up. We need to join up. We are like this little sunflower here. Maybe a little wilted, a little beat up now from this bat daily battle. But we're going to blossom and stand. Stand in the place where you live. We're going to stand against the enemy. We're going to stand against the man, man. Because this aggression will not stand man and the dude does not abide all right so this is the 13th of december 2020 um this is going to be a serious message in the beginning and then i'm going to share with y'all a really funny encouraging thing at the end and hopefully i don't get a copyright for showing this um part of this video that was in my feed and it's actually I think it's the only video I actually have watched yet. Let me get a drink of water, just a second. My throat's still parched. Okay. <clears throat> so, I've been really, really sick to where I thought I was dying for the past week, and I don't get sick. So it was pretty disturbing to me. But then the Lord showed me what I said on the last video last night. If y'all want to check it out, I'm not going to go into all that because I'm going to try to stay on topic, if that's at all possible. ADD, yeah, you know me. But um, it was actually an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And if y'all had some of the symptoms I did, you might want to you might want to check out the video from last night. So it would have been the 12th. It's titled something about holy fire or something. Hit with holy fire, I think is what I put. But anyway, um, I'm still not completely like 100%, but I'm feeling much better. So I'm really grateful for that. And I can come on and uh, I've been getting some downloads from the, from the Lord now that my headache has stopped thumping. Praise the Lord. Um we are called as warriors on the front lines for Christ. If you are a targeted, empowered individual, it, there's a reason why you're going through this fiery trial. It is to get out all the impurities and strengthen us. And after every attack, we become stronger and stronger. Like I sing, we get knocked down, but we get up again. So if you've come this far, you are one of the 144K. If you've been beaten down like a lot of us have, and isolated and stolen from and set up falsely and made homeless and Judas out and pets killed and constant noise campaigns on a daily basis. For me, it, it doesn't even end at night. <laughs> I'm like, really? How many different ways can we make noise today? And it never fails. They come up with a new one. I'm like, wow, I didn't think of that. I never seen a roof, uh, a leaf blower on the roof before, but got that yesterday and today on Sunday at 8 a.m. Sure did. Um, just some new funny ways that these gang stalking sellouts to Satan who are going into the fiery pit uh, come up with to torment God's elect, which is who we are. And you know what? The Lord said, "Be proud of who you are," not in a prideful way, but there. They're so proud about serving Satan and doing witchcraft. And they, they tell me, they brag about it, that they do witchcraft and they laugh and they tell me the spells they do. Some of these witches that I encounter. So we should be proud of who we are. We're warriors on the front lines for Jesus Christ. There is no higher honor. And I salute every one of you that are on this channel that have been tormented for years and years, if not your entire lifetime, because you believe in Jesus Christ and because you were chosen by the Most High Adonai. I salute you, all right? But we got to get busy 
for our father's business in this final hour. So now I'm going to try to try to just tell y'all a few things that father's showing me. Okay. So I was uh, shown by sis Roxanne. Thank you about uh millionaire millinery <laughs> millionaires yeah that's who funds us million not millionaires billion zillion millionaires the one percent they're behind all this the hell gates and his squad of bumbling buffooneries um the military are issuing i'm sure y'all all know this but i hadn't been online in a while because i was so sick and just a lot of other things so um but military are to issue the Vizax, is what I'm calling it. The ee, we're going to stab you in the arm. And they, they brag about it. That's how they say it, too. They have such glee over doing evil. These monsters. They're monsters. They're psychopaths. What do psychopaths do? Huh? Whatever they're doing that they know is evil, they turn it and point it on the good people. So... Like TIs, we're made to look like we're the bad people. We're criminals. We do all these wrong things, right? Because it's actually them mirroring. It's it's a it's an ancient old program that these clowns do. They're satanic clown posse is what they are, and they're about to be done, locked in the pit forever, where the where the worm will eat them. The worm never dies, and the locusts are gonna chomp, chompity chomp, chomp, chomp on them. And I, I feel sad for some of them. Well, I take that back. I feel sad for the ones that really don't know what they're doing. But these evil, evil monsters at the top, you can just look at their eyes. By the way, y'all, take a look at Biden for Time's eyes. They're demonic. They look like when Beyonce had Sasha Fierce, which was a demon, a high-ranking demon, a fallen is what it was, um, take over her. And actually, it happened in New Orleans, where I lived, but I didn't go to that thing, thank the Lord. And her eyes turned completely black, even the, even the outer part. That's what his eyes look like. They're not human, all right? The, some of these creatures that we're battling are not even human. So those demons, I don't feel sorry for. And we're not to pray for demons. We're to cast them out in Jesus' name. Tell them to go to dry places or wherever Jesus tells them to go. But anyway, getting back to the military or to issue the Vizax um, tomorrow. So who knows what's in store tomorrow. Um, so on the 14th, and guess where one of the places that they're featuring shipping it is? New Orleans, Ashner Hospital. I told y'all New Orleans is done. That evil, evil mayor of ours, well, not mine anymore because the Lord told me to get out of there in April and, and I was never going back again. And I've wanted to go back so many times and Father won't let me. Praise the Lord, I didn't. But she is a evil, satanic witch. And she, I, I won't get into it because all of them are. Most of them, I'm not going to say all, but 90% of the ones that are, you know, in positions such as she that destroy their own city and don't care about their people and then blame the people that are wanting to work, you know, to keep their businesses afloat and feed their family, you know, and she's blaming them for not caring. She is one evil bitch. Can I say that on Jesus TV? Well, I just did. But anyway, I know the Lord will forgive me because I bleeped it out. But um, yeah. So they're going to take over New Orleans. Like I said, New Orleans has an underground military and CIA area, which, you know, before I was awake, I had no clue of that. But yeah, it's there. It's in a lot of the cities, especially the bigger cities or a lot of the cities that um, where there's, you know, money, a lot of tourist industry, whatever, or the port cities. I told you the port cities, the Lord told me they're going to be taken out. So here we go with that. But so that's coming tomorrow. Um, they're they're shipping them in by FedEx and UPS, which I've told people all along is part of my targeting. Yeah, and so here we go. And of course, they are um, friends. You know, coupled not friends, but coupled with Amazon is another part of it, which is a shame because that's the only places that are allowed to be open now is the WalMarts and the Amacons, the Walfarts and Amacons. But anyway. <laughs> 
Again, the first part is going to be serious, and then I got a couple funny, positive things to show y'all at the end, but I need to get this out. Okay, so this is a video, and unfortunately, I did not write the title down. I'm sorry, my bad, but I saw it last night. It was from CBS News, and it was on YouTube because I don't watch I don't watch TV or the news or anything. And it said the FDA gives Pfizer my Sharona charade, Vizax, um, use authority, emergency use authority. I'm sorry, but what frightened me on it? I'm like, it didn't frighten me. It's um, it like stunned me. I'm like, what? Are people not hearing this? No, they're not. They urge all of Americans to get the shot when it's their turn. What does that even mean, their turn? And I already knew, the Lord told me. It means when they come and knock on doors, bad boys, bad boys, what you going to do? What you going to do when they come for you? We're going to fly out the window like the angels we are. We're, we're, we're supernaturally protected. If you have the Holy Spirit, there's no fear. But be ready to die for Jesus Christ. Die for your beliefs in Jesus Christ. Be prepared. Now, I personally haven't been shown that. Shout out to you, Matt and Yahoo. I said your name right. I think I really did it this time. Shout out to you um, for, for making that video about be prepared to lose your head if you have to. Okay? Well... I'm ready. The Lord reminded me of something this morning. I must have heard this this morning because I went to bed with a really bad he headache. So it must have been this morning. I apologize. Whatever. All the days blend together now. <laughs> but um, the Lord reminded me this morning. And this is not a bragging story, okay? But it's just something that shows how Father has always been with me. And it's we've always had this character. If you have Jesus, you, you usually have had a loving character. Even if you were abused as a child, hello, and all these other things that went wrong, you know, and gang stalked even. In, I, I remember it even uh, when I was like maybe eight or nine, which is when I had my first memory, but I didn't know what it was back then. But Father reminded me of something. And this is very, this goes along with this whole little talk I'm having because y'all are my friends so we're having a little talk come on and sit down on the sofa and actually there is a sofa in here can you believe it I have a room with a sofa this is unbelievable I got it for three more days so anyway um oh and thank y'all a couple of y'all donated I really really appreciate it and then I'm able to help others as well because there's several other people that are needing help that are warriors on the front lines for Jesus Christ but um, the Lord reminded me of something this morning. And this is the theme of the whole day. And the Lord puts everything together that he wants me to talk about. And it all kind of fits. Is where are all the cowboys? Where are all the men and women? The Wranglerettes. <laughs> That's what we had in high school. The Wranglerettes. The dance team. Where are those that will, will stand for what's right, stand for truth, stand against the tyranny, S speak up for those that can't, right? Help those that are cowering in their homes to be more brave. Help, pray for those, pray for our city, state, and nation. Call out the evil, corrupt winkers and government officials, which aren't even official, and those at the top. These murdering, lying, satanic freaks. The freak masons and all these evil witches and Satanists. Where are where are we? Okay. I'm just one person with a big mouth though. I do have a big mouth and people can hear me a mile away. And I used to hate it because people would be always like, shh, not so loud. You know what? I don't need a megaphone. So bring it. Bring it. I'm not going to shut up. I'm not going to be quiet. I'm not going to deny Jesus Christ. These witches and Satanists and gang stalkers, oh my, can go around flaunting the evil they do and laughing ah, ha, ha, and mocking Jesus and mocking those that believe in Jesus. 
but we can't speak up for Jesus and they can brag about the evil they do. And even the pedophilia is out in the open now. Where are Jesus' true followers? You need to be ready to die for Jesus Christ. Now, again, I haven't personally been shown <coughs> that, that's, that, I, that that happens to me. So the fact that Father hasn't shown me that and he's shown me that I go up leads me to believe that I do go up. And a lot of us do. I'm believing that that was what happens to 144K. And that's why, why we're already being transformed right now to be a new, to be made new. Hold on, y'all. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still a little under the weather, and I thought if I cough online, look at her! She's got the My Sharona charade. I need to quit screaming, though, because it's not helping my throat. Let me clear my throat. Anyway. The Lord wants us on the front lines. This means you, regulators. Okay, so Father reminded me of something this morning that I hadn't thought about in years. I used to, at one of my jobs, I've had many, many jobs, and now can't even get a job as a cashier in a dollar store or uh, working in a coffee shop. But gangsters can get my job. They go, hold up, man. And they start talking on their phone, but they won't hire me. But that's, you know what? It's a blessing because if you've been made to where you can't work and you're isolated, that means Father wants you to seek Him. You are blessed because you're being personally tutored by the Most High God. You know what a high honor that is? It's unbelievable. And I don't think I would have learned all this if I would have had a regular job. So thank you, Father. Thank you. And thank you, gang stalkers, for all your sabotage because it's only made me stronger. Anyway, so, Father reminded me of something this morning. I used to be a floral designer. And uh, this was in Texas a long time ago. And my boss became my best friend. And he happened to be a gay man. I know it's a sin, but I still loved him as a friend anyway. And I saw he had a kind heart. And he even confessed one night when we were drinking. It came out, he said, he really didn't want to be gay <coughs> in the beginning, but he thought he was. And he had got molested at an early age. So that had something to do with it. I know a lot of gay people haven't had that. Or maybe they blocked it out. <coughs> well, well, I just coughed online, sorry. But, um... But he confessed that, and then I told him, and this is before I was saved, I said, and I know this was the Lord telling me this, because I couldn't have come up with this on my own. I said, well, you may not be able to, to help your thoughts or your feelings, but you can stop from acting on them. Ba basically meaning being celibate. He said, I never thought of that. I don't think he did it, but <laughs> I don't think he can, you know, he he might have later down the line because I lost track of him a couple of years later after this happened. But the whole point of the story is too late. Long story short, too late. Um, he became my best friend. He was also my boss. He was only like a few years older than me. And we would go have so much fun after work. And we would have fun during work and laugh and dance around while we we're arranging flowers. And it was just he, he was a good hearted person, even though he was gay. He, I will give him this. He had the same boyfriend. He wasn't promiscuous, didn't act. You couldn't tell. Matter of fact, for the first three months when I started working there, I broke up with my other boyfriend that abused me, one of a whole long line of them, <laughs> and um, started telling him, you know, my my friend, my boss, by the way, I'm, I'm single now. I broke up with Kevin, broke up with Kevin, broke up with Kevin every day for like a couple months. That's how naive I was. I didn't know he was gay until he invited me to a dinner party. And this is kind of funny. He said, uh, CJ, that was his boyfriend. CJ and I would like you to come to a dinner party. And that's the first time I heard CJ. Well, back in those days, Pamela Anderson played CJ on Baywatch. So I immediately pictured this bombshell blonde woman. <laughs> right? <laughs> 
Imagine my surprise when I knock on the door. Welcome, welcome. And he jumps on this man's lap and gives him a kiss on the cheek. I'm like, you're gay? He went, ah, oh, that's what I love about you. You don't hold anything back. She's so honest. She's so open. And the boyfriend actually ended up liking me because I, I was honest and open or whatever. He could tell I wasn't judgmental. But that's how I found out he was gay. <laughs> I was that naive. But anyway, getting back to the story. So um, I'd been abused by this one guy. And then um, I got my own place. I'd been living with him. You know, I'm confessing that. And then I got my own place. And then they uh, set the rent. They uh, made the rent higher and I only made a certain amount doing floral work. It wasn't, I didn't get rich, but I enjoyed it. I made other people happy by making flowers and pretty things. <clears throat> and that's even funny. I wasn't planning on talking about that. That is so weird because that was actually in this and I just put it on here. Wow. That's funny. Thank you. Fun. See how he connects all the dots and the pieces. It's amazing. We couldn't ever come up with this on our, on our own. This is the most high God. This is how we become, those that are creative have Jesus. The gang stalkers, they don't have any creativity. They have to be told what to do. They're zombies. They're Satan's robots. It's, it's sad, man. And that's why they steal our gifts. They try to steal from us. They try to suck everything that Father gives us because they don't get it on their own because Satan doesn't give anything like that. He doesn't give good gifts. He gives evil things. Oh, he'll give them you know, worldly things, but they always want more and more and more. And they have to do evil to get these things. We don't have to do evil. We have to obey the Lord, but it's for our own good. But he doesn't ask us to harm others, stalk and spy and murder and lie and steal. Could you imagine living like these gang stalkers do y'all, these witches? Isn't, isn't it a sad life they have? And then look what's in store for them. So it's actually, I'm seeing it from, from his eyes, from father's eyes, how sad these people's lives really are. Could you imagine your day starting with getting up and going to make noise and someone that you don't even know, that, but you've been told to harass or follow them around and jump out and cough in front of them or like uh, honk horns sitting outside their house, follow them around the corner and jump out wearing red make evil comments and cast spells on people trying to harm others and try to break up relationships, try to make people uh, have bad health or worse, try to kill people, sacrifice pets and children and things. How sick is that? And then the perverted way they live, it's, it's sick and it's sad. And that shows the difference between living for the light side, come to the light Luke <laughs> in the dark. So that was kind of a sombering thought because I actually just thought how bad they must feel. And some of them even got to eat. <coughs> and that's that's no joke, y'all. These higher up Satanists and witches and free, freak masons, they have to eat their own poo poo. <laughs> and it stinks. <coughs> but anyway. Father reminded me of, this, of uh, the, the guy I was telling you about, my friend. And then so my friend ended up moving to, uh, to this little beach house in Galveston, Texas. And uh, he was starting to shop there, um, another floor is there. Um, after our floors closed, like a lot of places when I work, something always falls through. Even back then. When I could actually get work, just weird stuff would happen. Sabotage. Listen up, y'all. It's a sabotage. And so he asked if I wanted to, to come down there. And I was like, yeah, I'll come down there, but I can't afford it down there. And because uh, I had a cheap place where I was, and then they raised the rent. And that's when he said that. And I, and I said, okay, so we were going to be roommates. Of course, they ruined that. And it was strictly roommates because he was gay. So I felt, well, this will be perfect. And he won't steal any of my clothes. <laughs> yeah, because I've had some roommates steal my clothes before. Among other things they've stolen. Um, I get down there. They gave me, I'm going to say, no more than a week. Probably about four to five days. I can't remember because it was so long ago. But it was no more than a week. And he'd been living there peacefully for 
I'm going to say half a year peacefully after, you know, he started the other business and I was still in Houston and uh, Houston, we have, a, I started working, believe it or not, for Enron. And then I quit there. It's a whole long story, but long story short, too late. Um, so I want to just go back to doing floral design. He told me to come down there and then I could roommate with him. Within about four to five days, maybe a week, um, there was a knock on the door. It's cops, of course. He never had any problems the whole time he was there, so I move in. I hadn't been in any trouble back then. I'd had a couple speeding tickets, and that was it. And um, so there was a knock on the door, and then that's when Perry had told me. Well, oh, I said his name, but okay. I guess it doesn't matter. Um, he told me. Um, that he got this notice in the mail after I got there. It came right after I got there because they're trying to break us up as a friendship and destroy where I was living. It was all about targeting me, not him. But this is all a test of who we are in Christ. And even though I wasn't saved back then, I still had the characteristics that Christ gives us, right? You're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself. And you're supposed to stand up for what's right. And he, what had happened was he bought a Jeep. We both had Jeeps back then. And he got, this is Tex Ace, so you have to have the big tires on them, right? Even though mine didn't, but he, he did. But he had bought some new rims for the tires because he got bigger tires. And he'd written the check. And the check bounced. The check cleared before he put the money in. He had the money. He wasn't trying to steal it. But the check cleared. So the whole thing was like in this big, whole, whatever, long rigmarole. And so they sent him this notice saying that he was in default or something. It was something little like that. And I think the, the, whole, the whole thing of the, the rims, I think they were called Momo rims. I seriously remember. I think it was $2,000. And he had the money. But it, you, you get the whole gist of it. I'm making this too long. But anyway, he told me, look at this. He, he said, I don't even know what's going on. This happens to me all the time. They do this kind of crap. Not with checks. I've never written hot checks or anything. But like the, what just happened to me, they illegally evicted me for catching the man in my apartment, calling out the neighbors, saying, attention, gang stalkers. The target has left the bill or entered the building. And then the landlord kicked me out. And they stole my headphones that I bought to cancel all the noise harassment and all this other stuff. So they make me leave, right? Keep my deposit. And then they want the last two months rent. After I'm evicted, my electric is turned off and they ran me out of there. And they got to keep everything that I had in there. It's Which wasn't that much, but I had a mattress. That's a lot for me. So this crap happens to me all the time is what I'm saying. And most true TIs, this will happen to you too all this BS. So he showed me this and I'm like, oh my gosh, back then I didn't know that I was targeted. And I'm like, wow, that's weird. What what happens? He goes, well, I guess I got to go to court or something. Anyway, then there's a knock on the door. It's the cops. We, we have an arrest for, and they said his name and Perry goes, oh, I can't go. He he had something to do that weekend, and, and they waited till the weekend. I think it was Friday is when they did it, Friday evening. And he had something to do that weekend, and he had started the business and just had all these different things to do. He's like, what? I'm going to jail for this? And he said, I can't, I can't, go, I can't go in right now. And I said, well, hide. And he goes, you're going to get in trouble. And then they bang, banged on the door, and I told him to go hide in the shower. So he hides in the shower. <laughs> This is like we were, we were America's most wanted, right? It, w it was just a trip. And uh, so I go, yes. And they said that again. And then I said, he's not here. And they said, well, we need to come and check. And I said, well, I'm not dressed. And uh, they said, well, we need to come check anyway. Uh, we know he's in there. And if you don't let us in, then we're going to arrest you for harboring a fugitive. A fugitive, they called him. And I'm like, so I opened the door thinking they're not going to find him because <laughs> I never had anything like this happen. And I was like really young then. I was in my 20s. So they look around and then final thing, 
They go to the they go into the bathroom and open the curtain door and there there he is standing there. You got me. So they they handcuffed him like he's some big time criminal, right? And he didn't have anything on his he'd never done anything other than a couple speeding tickets. And it was very honest. He was trying to explain what happened. And then they're like, Well, we have a warrant here. And he's like, But there was no there was no no notice or anything. It just said I have to go to court. The whole thing was made up, all right? But then guess who they arrest? Me. They arrest me for harboring a fugitive. But I remember what the cop says. They let me go, by the way, later. But I remember what the cop says as we're leaving. He goes, man, he goes, I never seen anybody want to do want to get in trouble or go to jail for a friend. I wish I had a friend like you. You know what, cop? If you're listening, you could have a friend like me. If you ask Jesus Christ of Nazareth into your heart, because he was willing to die for us and he was willing to die for all of our sins. And he did. And they tormented this poor man, this innocent, kind hearted man that did nothing wrong, but wanted to show love and joy and spread truth and stand up for what's right. They tormented him. They isolated him. They mocked him. They stalked him. They spied on him. They set him up for cr uh, crimes he didn't commit. He was Judas out. He was um, he was run from town to town. He was made homeless, and then he was just totally. I, I don't even know how to say it, but you know the horrible things they did to Jesus before he died. I don't think a lot of people know this. They think he was just whipped, which is already enough, right? I'm not I'm not making light of just being whipped. No, this man was was stripped down. He was jabbed in the skull with a crown of thorns. Then he was paraded around for everyone to laugh and spit in his face. All these evil people and then these cowards that knew he was a good heart but were too cowardly to do anything because the ones at the top told him not to and the military soldiers were in charge and people refused they refused to stand up for this kind-hearted man and instead they laughed and they watched him as he was he was bent over i don't know i don't know if it was a tree trunk a table what whatever but on his back they took it's these it's medieval looking things and they're like this they're like claws and it's a whip but it's got these claws, these spike claws in it. And when they whip it, it rips out part of your flesh. And that's what they did to his back. And then they made him put on top of the pain that was already with open flesh gashing. They made him carry the cross way down this path. And no one would help. They just looked. And one time when he... When he fell, a man picked the cross back up for him. And then he had to die on the cross, isolated. And even at the very end, Jesus Christ was still trying to save others. When he, when he helped the man, the other man on the cross, I think it was a robber or thief or whatever you call him. And he said, "You will be to you will join me today in heaven." When the when the one man, Jesus knew he believed who he was, and he said, "Please remember me when you go to your kingdom." And he said, "You will be with me today." That's the love that our God, the Most High Adonai, has for us. People need to remember what He did. Are we too great that we can't give our lives like he did, being gang stalked and homeless and isolated? And I've never had a family or been married. I can't drive. I've never owned a home or anything. Well, I've owned a couple Jeeps, I guess, and a couple Mustangs. But we don't have friends, most of us, the eyes. But we're we're blessed because we're walking Jesus walk, but the Lord is merciful because we're not having to go through all that excruciating pain. But if 
just if the time comes when they come and they knock bad boys, bad boys on the door because no one will stand up for what's right. Or I shouldn't say no one, but very few will. And they cower and they go along with the gang stalking program. And some of these people know they're doing wrong, but they do it anyway because they're too cowardly. Man, I feel bad for... How, how are they going to feel on Judgment Day? Facing the Most High. Hold on a minute, y'all. I wasn't going to cry. I'm so sorry. I don't want to depress anybody. Right, I had to get my little girl, because she cheers me up, and here she is, here she comes to save the day. She was asleep, and I guess she heard me. Maybe she knew I was crying, I don't know. Yeah, she is. And Father has saved this little dog so many times. Yeah, they killed my other dog, they poisoned him, and then mocked, him, mocked me about it, but he's allowed me to keep her. And I've learned things. If I, if my dog hadn't have been poisoned by the Satanists and witches in New Orleans that laughed about it later, um, I might not have woke up as quick because I was waking up then. This was in 2012 when I, when I started waking up. And then, bam, at the end of 2012, and that's right around when they killed him was uh, January of 2013. And then I really woke up. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I didn't know the world was this evil. And yeah, it's not fun knowing that the world is this evil, but you know what? You can't defeat your enemy if you don't know their tactics. So believe me, I know their tactics. And I know a lot of you witches pretending to be my friend are on here. You need to repent and turn to Jesus while you still can. Jesus loves you and Satan is a liar. The Vizirus is fear. And Jesus is the cure. I've been saying that many, many times since this whole fiasco begun. But anyway, just think about since it is the Christmas season. Yeah, I don't celebrate it because they're celebrating Christ's death. That's why it's called Christ Mass. Get it? Mass. A death. A celebration of death. They're mocking Father. We're going to turn this into the celebration of lights. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you all. That started two nights ago, uh, and it goes till the 18th, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if something happens around that time on the 18th or something. I mean, a lot's going to be happening in the next five days, the, the whole rest of the year, but anyway, um, it is Hanukkah right now. Hanukkah is the festival of lights, and we are the light of the world, okay? So get out there and shine your light. Just remember what Jesus sacri sacrificed for us. And we can't give some sacrifice for him? Come on now. I need some regulators on this channel. To mount up! Get out there. Share the good news. Pray for others. And if you have the gift to heal the sick, heal the sick. Do whatever your gift is. If you got a voice, then you better use it. All right. So... Okay, then I'm like, I'm, I won't have a place to stay in three or four more days. As I know, several of y'all on this channel don't know where you're supposed to go. Um, so this morning when I got up, I was like, Lord, where do I go? What am I supposed to do? I, this is very rare that I flip open to a Psalms. Like, I'll flip open to it to read it, like on purpose, but every morning... Um, whenever I ask the Lord what he wants me to know for today, or I ask him a question, I open it in faith. I never end up on Psalms. It's always like more towards the end of the, of the book. A holy book, okay? So I, I might have flipped to a Psalms maybe five times ever. So this was really cool. I flipped to Psalms 91 after I said, I wrote down, I asked Father, where am I to go? Because I know the time is late and we need to we need to gather the troops, okay? Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. The dude abides. That's even funny. That's in there. Under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. 
Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence, noisome, noise, never ending gang stalking, leaf blowing, satanic cloud posse. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou, thou shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but none shall come near thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague, yes, that's right, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. No, my Sharona charade for us, if you believe in Jesus. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall they shall bear thee up with their hands, lest, the, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. <laughs> Squish the enemy under our feet, yo, y'all. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him salvation. The Father wants you to know, if you're worried about this, all these crazy things going on, I know it's hard. I'm alone. I'm on foot. I don't drive. 55. <laughs> I don't drive. Um, and like I said, I'm alone. I'm on foot. I have my little dog, but that's even harder because I got to carry her on my shoulder. And, uh, I have no clue where I'm to go. The Lord has given me one place. And then I moved from there to the next place in obedience. And now I'm supposed to stand until I get my next directions. And this is how he works with me. All right. So I'm with you. If you have no clue, if you're nervous, people are going to be knocking in your door, kicking in your door, whatever. If you have Jesus in your heart, you're good, all right? Just keep the faith, and he will guide you to where you're to be or hold you in place with a mighty hedge of protection, a wall of fire around us. Y'all don't know how powerful we are if you have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside you. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ at this time, it is crucial that you do so. And what you need to do is, I, I tell people to get on their knees. You don't have to do this, but it is a show, it, it shows that you truly mean it. I get on my knees in true repentance. I do this, honestly, daily. I'm always doing something like, whether I thought a wrong thought or I, you know, I said, you know, something like, these gang stalkers are going to go in the pit, you know. I, maybe I shouldn't have said that, even though I'm saying it inside the house. You know, I'm thinking a wrong thought, or I'm not praying for somebody. I'm not forgiving quick enough. Um, or a bigger sin, like I went to drink, which has happened. You know, that was my, that's no secret. I've messed up with that. Or just anything. I disobeyed the Lord and didn't do what he told me to do. Like by coming on, it took five extra hours before because I felt was sick and didn't want to do it. I'm like, oh, no, Lord, my head is bumping. No, you need to put this out. No, my head is bumping. Let me just rest a little, a little longer. I got to repent for that. So if you have not accepted Jesus Christ, we're all sinners. No sin is bigger than another. The only unforgivable sin that I know of is blas blaspheming the Holy Spirit. I don't know exactly why that is. Because it doesn't say, the Bible doesn't say you can't blaspheme Jesus, but it says specifically the Holy Spirit. Hold on a minute, y'all. i got to check on my little dog. Okay, 
So, uh, and you're not getting me pretty or my little dog, too. That's what a lot of the witches will say to me. They actually say that. It's a joke. Anyway, get on your knees in true repentance. Repent. Repent, repent. Repent for your witchcraft. Repent for whatever you're doing that you're sinning with. And you'll know, you'll be convicted in your heart of what you're doing that's wrong, that's harming the Lord and harming you too. And then you ask Jesus into your heart. You truly believe that Jesus died on the cross for yours and my sins. On the third day he rose and he's coming back in the clouds and he is coming very soon, y'all. He is coming. Get ready, get ready, get ready to rumble. <clears throat> okay, so how long did I make this already? Just a second. I don't even know. Okay. I might try I might be able to make this under an hour. Wow. It's the flower hour power. Flower hour power? Our flower power? I don't know. It was some old show I heard some hippies. Tree hugging hippies talking about. Uh, hey, don't date me, y'all. I'm not that old yet. But I'm a hippie, and I'm a tree hugger. Okay, again, everything is a mockery. We shouldn't be celebrating Christmas. Holy days is holidays, get it? It's holla, 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 holla. Let me holla at you. <laughs> holidays. We're celebrating the holidays, get it? They're mocking God's holy days. They turn it into the holly, the holly tree. That's what the witches use to cast spells. Why do you think they call it Hollywood? It's like some magical wand thing that they use out of the branches of the holly tree. So it's holly and then days, like you're in a daze, because they're putting spells or casting spells. People are under spells. Just look at them. They're zombified. Some of these people, it's like, are you joking? You can't see this stuff? No, some of them can't. That's because they've been given over to a strong delusion, which the Bible speaks of and warns of in the final hour. If you deny Jesus, you're given over to a strong delusion. Oh boy, and it's not going to go good for them. But anyway. All right, so I told y'all I would end it with something funny. So... I'm just asking y'all to step up, step up to the plate and get get out. My uh, channel is shadow banned. Um, people have been telling me this for a while. I already knew it. I didn't know how bad it was. Um, it's bad. All right. No one's getting. No one has been getting notifications in about a half a year or longer. And every time I go up about a hundred in subscribers, it goes down a hundred. Like it goes up and then it goes right down. And they are doing all kinds of other things. They're blocking. Someone came on saying, why am I clicking a pin? That's one of their triggers. I didn't even have a pin on the video that they commented on it for. Uh, a lot of the stuff they change, they orchestrate all this crap. Get these videos out if they're speaking to you. But this one, I'm asking y'all, if y'all know people that are that are hiding, that don't know Jesus, but they you know that they know that there's something up with this My Sharona charade. Show these videos and other videos that people um, that are speaking truth, especially targets empowered 144K on the front lines for Jesus are doing and tell people like anybody that's hearing this, tell people to keep checking my videos and resubscribe, re resubscribe because they're unsubscribing everybody. So anyway, all right. And I could care less about how many subscribers I get, but I want to get this out, get these messages out that the Lord tells me, including a lot of the uh, pro prophecies that I've been given from last year. I was given the prophecy about seeing the dumpster, Donald Dumpster, and uh, the rest of the clown posse running out of the White House wearing masks. That was in July of last year, of 2019. I warned y'all back in, in February about this fake fax, and it's going to be the mark of the beast. In February, I warned y'all about seeing a fallen actually would know he didn't need a vessel, or it didn't need a vessel. Fly over 
where I was right around, it was right around midnight, to be honest. That was in March. Just a lot of different things that this is not me doing this. This is the Lord. He wants people to hear this and they don't want me to get this out. Why do you think I'm stalked by freaking CIA freaks? A floral designer stalked by some CIA freaks and military and corrupt cops all my life? That's because of one of the things that one of the gifts that the Lord has given me. And if you're targeted, you have a special gift. You have a special anointing. You are the golden child. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to end it with something funny. Come here. All right. So I want to end it with something funny, y'all. So this really made me happy. I don't watch the news. I do not have any clue why this showed up in my feed other than the Lord wanted me to see it because I've never even clicked on, oh boy, I don't think I wrote down what it was on. Just a second. I want to say it was Fox Business, Fox News Business or something. I, I've never clicked on it before, but it was, not only was it, like, it lifted my spirits because I'm like, why is nobody standing up to this tyranny? You know, we as TIs, we've dealt with it our whole lives. We're used to not, no one helping us. No, everybody turning us away, you know, and all, all the crap that they do. But why is nobody standing up for everyone else, including your friends and your loved ones and your neighbors and these businesses that are all being destroyed, these mom and pop places, you know, with these everyday Joes and Joannes that just want to make a living for their family. Why? Where are the people that are standing up for this? I was getting really pissed. And believe me, I go out there and voice it. I'm not just saying this on here. I put out one video that actually I was able to record where I was doing a little bit of preaching down by the river. Um, probably about a month ago. So I really do walk the walk, y'all. And I get nailed for it, believe me. This is not easy, but it's not cheesy. Anyway, <laughs> and my name ain't Wheezy, because we're moving on up to the east side, to a deluxe apartment in the sky. Wow. Thank you, Father. See how creative he is? That is Father. Moving on up. I said I'm not Wheezy. Her name was Wheezy. What was that TV show? Moving on up. Man, I can't remember the TV show. It had Wheezy. The Jeffersons. <laughs> that is funny. Something's going to come of that. There's. Remember that. Y'all saw it live, live, live on Jesus TV. Okay, so this came in my feed. And I saw it today. Oh, it's on Fox Business. This is the title of it. I don't know if y'all can see it. Okay, there it is. Fox Business. And it was on December 7th, but it showed up in my feed today. I'm like, I knew it was the Lord told me to watch it because I don't watch this kind of stuff. It is hysterical, but it also shows... This is a community in Staten Island, okay? And I'll give you all the rundown, and then I'll just, I'll try to go through little funny clips as I as I can, and hopefully I don't get copyrighted. Um, but what happened was this bar owner, I think it's called Max Bar, and they serve cheeseburgers too, and they're magically delicious. Um, hold on a minute again, y'all. I gotta get some more water. Water! It's in Staten Island, New York. You heard? And um, so there, uh, this this big attorney dude has been like an attorney, I don't know, 20, 30 years there. And a couple other people in the neighborhood um, are standing up for this bar owner, finally. Like that poor woman bar owner that was all by herself standing up saying, why am I being closed? But across the street... Hollywood Studios has everything open and they're exactly their um, 
tables were exactly spaced the same with a little divider that she had, but she had to close because she's a mom and pop business. She's not part of the corporation. Get it? Corporation. They're telling you they're dead. They're killing people. The corpse, like the army corpse of engineers. They call it core, but it's spelled corpse. They're, they're killing people. That's what they're doing. Anyway, not, not one person. If I would have been in that town, I would have been right down there, whether I'd ever been in that restaurant or not. That's how we need to be. Stand up for what's right, y'all. Where is it? Where are the regulators? Come on. All right. I'm sorry. I'm just, I, I want some people to stand up for these, these people that are hurting that are, there, she stood up for herself and not one person in the whole city, I think this was in L.A., not one other person came over there to stand stand with her. Really? That's shameful. Shameful. Shame, shame, shame on you now, W. Anyway, well, in Staten Island, New York, They got the gangster crew, the mafia. I call them New Orleans Mafia. And I've known a few of them. Not these guys, but New Orleans. <laughs> but they're cool, man. They're smart dudes. They care about others. And they care about their city. So they're standing up against the tyranny. So this is what happened was the, the guy um, got shut down by the blinkers. The, the cops. I'm sorry, cops, if you're watching this. Most of y'all are corrupt or you're pansy-fied. You, you won't stand up for it. You took a note to protect and serve who you're serving, the 1% and yourselves. They don't care about you, and they're going to they're gonna kill you. They're going to off you. Once the kind hearts, the Jesus hearts are off this earth, you're done. And then you're going to have to stand before the Most High God on Judgment Day and ask why didn't you stand up against, and, and answer why didn't you stand up against the tyranny. Why did you do these evil, illegal things or turn the other cheek and not say anything? Turn your head is what I mean, not turn the other cheek. That's what we do. No more. No more. Yeah, we get slapped in the face. Yeah, we do. We do turn the other cheek. We, if, they give, if they ask for your coat, give them your, give them your shoes and your, and your, I don't know, your bicycle also. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, y'all know what I'm saying. You heard? Okay, so he gets shut down. Then he opens back up anyway. So he's actually, bravo, he's standing against. He's not doing anything wrong. He did the six feet apart. He did every kind of rule that they told, and they still shut him down. For what reason? While the bozos down the street can be open because they're part of the crew, the satanic clown posse. So... <coughs> Um, apparently the gist of it is y'all watch the whole thing. It's only 17 minutes long. I'm just going to, I'm going to play like maybe about 10 clips of it. Hopefully I won't get copyrighted, but, um, this other guy was in there. He was a patron, but he had got out of prison. So he was legally out of prison. Right. And I'm sure he's probably targeted. It sounds like it. The whole thing's just bizarre. Um, and he's in there and enjoying himself like all the other customers. He's not wearing a mask. So they arrest him for not wearing a mask. So he goes to jail for not wearing a mask, even though there's no mask laws inside the restaurant. So anyway, then the next thing is not only did the restaurant get shut down the first time, but then they reopen and they come to arrest a guy in there, shut the restaurant back down is the gist of it is what I caught from it. And then, and I apologize if I'm not saying it all exactly right, because I only watched it twice. But um, then the, the same guy is, oh no, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. Okay, the first time the restaurant was told to shut down, but they reopened anyway. And then that's when the guy that had been in prison apparently went in there. And he was with all the other patrons just hanging out and having a couple of drinks and a cheeseburger. And they they picked him out and arrest him. And then when he's coming back down the street, um, I guess it was a few days later, the sheriffs came by, 15 sheriff cars, and swarmed him in an alley. 
and arrested him again. Didn't identify themselves as sheriffs or anything. Just a bunch of crazy crap. And uh, apparently the sheriffs lied. And you'll hear the attorney say, and they uh, boldly lied, lied. Well, they lied to me. They lied about me and set me up for a crime I didn't com commit. NOPD, sure they did. And other cops have done just as much corruption to me, evil, evil things to me, including hog tying me when I was 23 years old. They sure did. They've stolen my car out of my driveway. They've turned to legally turn off my cops in uniform have come on my property and, and cut the wire to my electric box and illegally turn on my water. My neighbor witnessed this, but she was too scared to stand up. I wasn't. And I go to internal affairs and get even more harassed. My Jeep was stolen. Yeah, they stole it out of the driveway to send me a message. Well, guess what? That was a while back and I'm still here because you know why? The Lord has my back and he's given me this voice, my voice, so that I can speak out for those that are too scared to do so. I'm not scared. I'm not scared to stand up to the tyranny. And I hope you all will get this. Once you have Jesus in you, you won't be scared. Right? So this is like how they did the Roman, the Roman soldier, soldiers did Jesus. This is exactly what's going down right now. And all the people around are too cowardly to say anything. So we're the 1%. We need to stand up against the other 1%, the evil. All right? We're the remnant. We got to balance out the evil with the good and kick their aces. How do you do that? By speaking truth, standing up for what's right. And talking about Jesus and leading others to Jesus Christ. One more second, y'all. Good day. Good day. Good day. I'm sorry, y'all. There she is. She's usually not running around at night. Um, she's usually sleeping, but I think I woke her up when I was... It's getting kind of passionate there talking about whatever I was talking about earlier. Okay, so basically the gist of it is now they've got this big, powerful attorney and then a bunch of other wise guys. <laughs> hey, they are wise. These guys are. Um, the three wise men. How funny. And Because uh, there's three of them. And they're standing for the small business owner that just wants to keep his little bar and restaurant open. So I just want y'all to hear it because it's actually kind of funny. Hold on. That just don't make sense to regular people. And we find out now that the first guy to stand up to the tyrants gets crushed. De Blasio and now Cuomo have told the people of Staten Island, New York City, and the country that if you speak up to the emperor, you get crushed. <laughs> but guess what? The emperor's about to have no clothes. No clothes. No suit for you, Kumo. Kumo is a fallen angel, just so you know. I've told you all that before. And look at him. He looks like the guy that played, um, what's his name? Al Pacino. He looks like Al Pacino who played Satan. How fitting. What kind of freak show are we in anyway, yo? <laughs> all right. Hold on. Oh crap. Oh Click snap! Click to order. Using Sorry. SAS, of course we gotta have gotta have some sort of in the first what three seconds they already have an ad. Okay, just a second. It's kinda hard to do on a phone. I'm trying to fast forward it. In front of Max Pub for trying to stand with the people. Hold on a minute. The other night we found out that it was a political ambush. More details will come your way on what's happened, but it's a tale of two cities. Walmart <laughs> just announced they're paying seven hundred million dollars in bonuses, and Staten Island restaurant owners are getting arrested two times in a week for trying to make a hundred bucks. Yep. Now that's great. 
Walmart is paying whatever he just said, bonuses, two million or something, two thousand million. I don't know. I'm bad with numbers. But the small mom and pop stores are being arrested twice a week for making a hundred bucks. It's pathetic. All right. I have a fiance and three kids. This is the man that this is the man that uh, has the business that they shut down and all this is about. Call a family. Like every Irish kid I ever dreamed. Like every UTIs, you, did you, do you do you notice something? Da, 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 da. That's all folks. I'm getting kind of tired, y'all. Um, I want y'all to notice something. So I'm fast forward and it's already like been three minutes. Three people have talked, so now the business owner comes on that they're harassing. That's not part of the satanic sellout system, right? He's just, a, you heard him. He's just a regular family man that just wanted to, he had his dream. Like people dreamt about being a policeman or a fireman. He always wanted to own his own bar and restaurant. And they don't like that, the ones at the top, because he's, he's not evil. He's not a satanist. But when he starts talking, you start hearing beeping and a trash guy goes by. And they always put trash men in my path, always, every day. It doesn't matter where I'm at. It doesn't matter what time of day. Um, and they sweep. And they throw out trash, these gang stalking sellouts. Um, and that's to say, we, we got to take out the trash. Call the cleaner. Morning. I'm Keith McElhaney, a lifelong Staten Islander. Hear it? I have a fiance and three kids. We are a regular blue collar family. Like every Irish kid I ever dreamed, like every Irish kid, all I ever dreamed was opening my own pub. While other people were dreaming of being firemen or police officers, I always dreamed of being a bar owner. We worked hard pouring in our life savings, and after three months, we got shut down by an arbitrary set of rules. I respect COVID. I don't respect the cor corruption, overreach, and o arbitrary color zones that are killing all my friends' establishments here and across the country. The fact we are all come out here today, you will find that we are here because of Cuomo and de Blasio trying to crush the little man who dare to speak up. Y'all heard that? Cuomo and de Blasio trying to crush the little man who dares to speak up. That's our life, T.I.s. Hello. We've already lived it. What did I, what I've been telling y'all for the last, what, year and a half? That when it get, it comes to this time that it is now, it is our time to shine because we've already been trained by the Most High personally. We've already gone through what these people are now going to be going through that I talked about from my balcony last year as Juliet doing my balcony speech in New Orleans and a couple other places, by the way. But that was the main one. And uh, I warned everybody. I said, they're going to be coming for you. This is going to be you. And so people are going to be coming to us for answers and hope. This is part of our calling. You know how exciting this is? So get ready, get ready. Be encouraged. Be encouraged, y'all. This is our time. This is amazing that the Lord has allowed us to go through all this and come through it basically unscathed. Yeah, we've got dents in our head and uh, broken ribs, you know, fractured or whatever. And, you know, our, our feet are pretty gnarly. Some of us, <laughs> some of our teeth have been radiated out of our heads. But guess what? They didn't take our joy. They didn't take our love. They didn't take our hope. And they can't take our faith. All right. Sorry, I gotta keep hitting water. Water. Let's see. This just takes a while because I gotta keep fast forwarding it. I want to play the whole thing, but I know they'll give me a copyright. Second. Faith is the world's first yeah, and here we go again. It's amazing how many. How many ridiculous 
ads. Oh, I love this guy. <laughs> this guy's hilarious. And he kind of looks, and this guy kind of reminds me of De Niro. Ready? Um, this is a big fight, people. This is a huge fight, and it's about the emperor, like John said, <laughs> squashing the little man. It's not fair. Yes, the situation is ugly, but it is not fair what's happening to the small businesses. And I'm going to tell you right now, the famous lines of Captain Perry in the Battle of Lake Erie, men do not give up the ship, and we will not give up the ship. Awesome. Awesome, y'all. And guess what? Our ship has is, is come in. We've got angel ships around us, y'all. Do you know how much backup we have by the Most High? There's no fear. We should have no fear. Okay. Let me go to the next part. I'm sure y'all can hear the banging. Just ignore it. The deputies do not have broken legs. That's an outline. Okay. This is the big uh, attorney. He's actually calling out saying the deputies were lying. Because they're good at it. That's what they do. They get trained to lie. Our deputy went up on the hood, has broken leg. Is that a lie? The deputies do not have broken legs. That's an outright lie. One of the deputies injured his ankle, either he tore a ligament or something. We still don't know the extent. But the fact that that they lied and went out on a press release to all of you saying that he broke his legs is an outrageous, outright lie, completely confirmed. So what happened? <laughs> Okay, but it gets better. Are y'all in suspense yet? Was there an ambulance? Okay, I gotta keep going. At no time can you see an officer injured. They had 15 unmarked police cars. That came in, uh, not police cars, let me rephrase that. Sheriff's deputies, unmarked cars. They came in, swept Danny away in four minutes, like he was Osama bin Laden in a CIA <laughs> black ops. And in four minutes, you've <laughs> seen nothing else on the scene. Not a, not a, not a, not a, not a I gotta hear that one more time. <laughs> TIs, empowered individuals, don't we live it? It's like if you tell people that you got CIA on your ace, they're just like, yeah, right. <laughs> this is funny. Oh my gosh, I love these guys. These wise guys, the wise guys. Okay, here it is again. That came in. Uh, not police cars. Let me rephrase that. Sheriff's deputies, unmarked cars. They came in, swept Danny away in four minutes, like he was Osama bin Laden in a CIA <laughs> black ops. And in four minutes, you see nothing else on the scene. Not a, not a, not a, not a sheriff's deputy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just find that funny. All right, hold on. It takes a while because I'm doing this on a little phone. That man in a little coat. Why they do Over cheeseburgers? It, that's what it seems. It's over cheeseburgers and beer. <laughs> Why would they do this? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. Over cheeseburgers and beer? My life, NYP. Okay, hold on. Oh, we're cheeseburgers and beer? <laughs> That's what it seems like. <laughs> hold on, we got another commercial. What are you doing? What do you have over there? You little scallywag. You. 
Yes, I call my dog a scallywag. Because she's going on the ship with me. Our boat's almost coming in. Okay, here, here we go. They, they, they were served food. There was drinking going on. However, you do not have to wear a mask in a restaurant. Maybe there was some lack of social distance and exuberance, but that's no reason to come in and send a hit squad of 20 un unmarked cars to zoom him away in three minutes like he's Osama bin Laden. <laughs> A hit squad. Hello. <laughs> that guy's great. Hey, TIs, we all need to get together and ask him to be our attorney for all the legal crap they do to us. Like this. Okay, here's another one. This guy's when great. I think, wow, if you came out of your perch in your <laughs> affluent neighborhood, and came down here and told the liberal left this is a good thing because it's about our freedom and liberty, we probably wouldn't be standing here today talking about a political prisoner who was the victim of, in my view, a political ambush. An but ambush. Oh, wait, I forgot the best part. Let's hear that again. And everyone else in a time of need after 9-11 when I cried for his father. So when I hear stuff like this, it hits me emotionally when I think, wow, if you came out of your perch in your affluent neighborhood and came down here and told the liberal left this is a good thing because it's about our freedom and liberty, we probably wouldn't be standing here today talking about a political prisoner who was the victim of, in my view, a political ambush by the king and his henchmen. <laughs> the king and his henchmen. The emperor has no clothes. The emperor has no clothes. I'm sorry. These guys are great. I love these dudes. Okay, let me let me go to the next part. Okay, now this part is actually this is for especially for TIs. This is what has happened to us. Every person like we might make a friend in the world or whatever, you know, while we're out, I'm not saying on YouTube, we're out or we're even at the grocery or at the gym, you know, back in the day when you're allowed to go to the gym without wearing a mask and choking to death. Um, just in everyday life and you make friends and then the next time they act like they hate your guts or they're scared to talk to you or they become even worse, they become part of the gang stalking and all your neighbors turn on you and everybody stalks you follows you, harasses you, makes fun of you, lies about you. Um, you know, the whole gang stalking program. And you wonder how this can be. How are these people all going along with it? This is, this is how, right here. What we do know is there's support everywhere. And when the emperor really wants to paint you badly, they try to kill your support with your own people. How do you do that? You paint them as a criminal. So you're watching it right before yep. your eyes, folks. And you're going to find out that what you're seeing here in Staten Island, New York, is not America. Amen. We're in Nazi Germany. Welcome to hell. And guess what? It's going to get worse. So we got to regulate. We got to stand up for what's right. But is that not amazing? You paint them as criminals. That's what they've done to us. They blacklisted us. And people believe it because they go along with whatever the authorities say. You got to respect the authority, Cartman. Mom, kiss me. You know what? Well, I know one kitty kitty who's sleeping with mother tonight. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a bad joke. It was Cartman. Screw you guys. I'm going home. And we're going home too, y'all. Really, really soon. So I just wanted to tell y'all that, yeah, the truth is coming out. And it's going to get worse. But we who are on the front lines for Jesus Christ should have no fear. So speak up for those that can't. And try to wake people up however you can. Show them videos. Uh, like write, write like scripture down and just leave it. 
Just just drop it on the ground when you're walking past these gang stalkers. Fling it on the ground. Do you even know what you're participating in? You're helping to kill America, gang stalkers. America is now Nazi Germany. Okay, I'm praying for everybody. Um, I keep on squawking, but I'm getting kind of tired and stuffy again. I'm all stuffy inside. So anyway, shine your light and I'm out.